Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? All right. Well, happy Wednesday. You can have what you say. So if it hasn't, if it's been a crummy Wednesday, you can still finish today strong. Amen. So happy Wednesday, everybody. Well, let's all come in and come up a little closer. Shatil and I just got back from sunny Florida, where it was in the 80s. I prayed, I said, Lord, I need some sunshine, some 80 degree humidity, living out here in the dry. We were so happy to have some humidity. It's amazing the things you miss. <laughs> well, there was, uh, we call it the yellow snow, the pollen, because of the, the heat, the, the trees. You go out in the morning in the car, you turn the wipers and spray the windshield because the yellow snow was on everything. So, But we're so blessed to be back and... I was, uh, we were at Faith Life Church with Keith Moore for his Greater Faith Conference, and you can actually go and watch that, the full service, it's online on his website, so it's more life, M-O-O-R-E, life.org, or F-L-C, Sarasota.org, and you can watch the whole services, and uh, if you just want to build up your faith, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, so... Some powerful, powerful word. I'm going to share a little bit tonight, but I probably won't get into it. I'll probably get more into it on Sunday, Sunday morning. Um, I believe I'll be ministering. So, if we don't get into everything tonight, how many knows there's another time coming next? Amen. <laughs> so we won't weary the church family. But let's pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord. You minister to each and every one of us according to your will. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you bring us into the truth that will set us free, that will keep us free. We thank you for establishing us in the truth. We thank you for ministering to us tonight. And we give you the glory and the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Open up to Ephesians chapter 4. Judy, you can turn it down just a little bit. Ephesians chapter 4, and in verse 7, says, But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Can you turn it down just a little? Now this he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. Verse 10, he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Verse 12, for the equipping, say with me, the equipping the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So God gave gifts, that talking about the fivefold ministry gifts to the body for the equipping of the saints. That's you, that's me. This, the, we're called saints in the New Testament. Either you're a saint or you ain't. <laughs> so I'll go with saint. Now, we're not talking about sainthood and all of that in, in religion. We're talking about that we are called saints of God. He's equipped us for the saints uh, of the saints for the work of the ministry. So we're to be equipped for the work of the ministry, for the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ. Verse 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect, or we could say it this way, to a mature person, a mature believer. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I remember Brother Guy Dunnick talking about this, that we're called to a high calling. Amen. So we're called to grow. We're called to, to come from level to level, from grace to grace, from faith to faith. 
And so we're to grow up into these things, into the stature of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14, that we should no longer be children. Say that with me. No longer be children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love. Look at your neighbor and say, in love. Yeah. You know, you can say some true things, some true statements, but forget the love part involved there. <laughs> I've been guilty of that. <laughs> but we're to speak the truth in love and that we would grow up in all things into him who is the head, which is Christ. Verse 16, from whom the whole body, say with me, the whole body, Joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Now, I love Ephesians. There's so much revelation in the book of Ephesians. I mean, you could just camp out and study. You could do a word study. You could uh, get some resources and look and just find so much truth. I find uh, so many truth nuggets in the book of Ephesians. And so you could just camp out here. But what I was reminded of or prompted by the Holy Spirit tonight is that speaking the truth in love. Now, I know it's Valentine's week, so it's very easy to say, okay, well, he just picked, you know, a love message tonight. But, you know, God is love. And he loves us. He loves you. Amen. Aren't you glad? I'm glad that God loves me. He loves you. And he shows no partiality. If he blesses me, he'll bless you. Amen. It's a, but we can experience his love in a greater way by our faith increasing more and more. By our hearing of the word and by our demonstration, uh, by example, by those around us, it can increase our faith. Amen. We see others believe God for something and then we find out that God's no respecter of persons. So if they believe God for provision, he's our father. He's a good father. He loves me. So he wants to bless me in the same way that he blessed them. Now, we all have different needs. We may have all different budgetary needs. Amen. <laughs> Your budget may be a, a different, it's a different budget than mine, or we may even have the same budgetary monetary needs, but we may need those amounts at different times, <laughs> different seasons. I don't know if you're like me, I'm a planner, I have my, my bill calendar. Well, this bill is due on this date, so I'm going to make sure that money is in that account because it's going to come out of that account. Or if you have this on auto pay or this here, and you need to know when the money needs to be where it needs to be. <laughs> right? And uh, But God, he is faithful to meet our needs. And so if we find out that he's good enough to meet a $5 need, and then we hear that God met our brother and sister in Christ's $50 need, well, that's more than a $5 need. Well, I can use my faith to believe God to meet my $50 need like he met my $5 need. Or maybe it's a $5,000 need. Or it's a $50,000 need to pay off a mortgage or to get rid of debt. God wants you to be free, amen? And so we can take the principles of the word, add our faith to the hearing of the word in any area, and be able to receive from God in those areas, amen? So we have to have the truth to be set free in, in any area, and then the truth to keep us free in every area, amen? Because if you're, if you're human, how many know you can go from not doing anything to overboard? Yeah. Or is that just me? Oh, I'm going to get fit. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to drink a lot of water. I'm going to exercise. I'm kind of an all or nothing person. <laughs> Found that out about myself, you know. Uh, all or nothing. Either we're all in or it's a cheeseburger every day and extra of this and extra of that and not enough water and a little bit of soda. And, and before you know the slippery slope goes you know, and there you go. And you go, what happened to me? <laughs> Lord, help. <laughs> I need that truth before me that I continue to abide in that truth and walk in that truth to continue to be free in that truth. Amen? 
But God loves us. He's merciful. He's kind. He's so gracious. He's tender-hearted towards us. And that's good news. Amen? So if we've ever fallen, we've gone to the extreme in one area or another, we can ask God to help us, and the Holy Spirit restores us, and he'll lead us step by step to where we need to be. Amen? So don't get caught up in condemnation and the, the, the shame trap of the enemy. We've all fallen, but thank God he helps us get back up. Amen? Amen? He empowers us by his spirit to walk according to his word. So we're to speak the truth in love. And when we do that, we'll grow up. I love that connection here in Ephesians 4 verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up. Do you see that connection there? That we are able to speak the truth in love, and it's actually a testimony or a witness of the fact that we are growing in the grace of God, that we're growing spiritually, because uh, we've probably all encountered what I could, I would say, it, Bible thumpers, that know the truth, but it's the sword that cuts going in and going out with no grace. We have experienced just the truth with no grace. How do you know that you need the truth of the word and the grace of the Holy Spirit for true change to take place? We need that grace. I like to say it this way. The Holy Spirit, the grace by the Holy Spirit is that WD-40 that keeps the gears moving. <laughs> we need a little WD-40 in our life. We need that grace. Uh, and he empowers us to live according to the truth. See, truth. the law came through Moses, John tells us, but grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. Amen. So we see this picture of the truth, the solid foundation of the truth, and the grace of God manifested in the flesh through the person of Jesus Christ. And we see that, that whoever came to him, he did not cast them out, even the woman caught in the very act of adultery that was brought to him to be made an example and to be shamed and condemned. We see a picture of grace, Jesus, and he turns the situation around those that would be her accusers. He said, he who is without sin, let them cast the first stone. That's exponential grace and manifestation in the ministry of Jesus. Amen. Because we see in Romans the truth that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all entered into sin. That's why we need a Savior, Jesus. That's why we need His saving grace. We've been saved through faith in Jesus Christ by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. So grace and faith are not at war with one another. Amen. God is love. He is love. He has faith. He, he ministers to us His grace. And we need His grace. Amen. So I don't want you to be confused about these things. He is a God of faith. He is a God of love. He is a God of grace. He is also a righteous God. Amen. And so he stands by his word and there is an account that will come and the judgment. But we are not judged as the world is judged. There's a judgment seat of Christ. And anything you may have done, if it has been washed by the blood of Jesus, you are forgiven. Hallelujah. Good news. <laughs> Amen. That's some good news right there. Let's turn over from Ephesians chapter 4. So speaking the truth in love will cause you or it will give evidence to the fact that you're growing up in all things into him, capital H, speaking of, of growing up in Christ who is the head Christ. So we're speaking the truth in love. And I don't know about you, but I find myself... Being challenged, um, prompted by the Holy Spirit, that our that my own personal speech would be seasoned with the grace of God, because it's an everyday an opportunity for me to not let the grace of God season my speech, <laughs> and just be led according to the flesh. You know, uh, if we're human beings, flesh is our preset. 
but we're to come to a higher level, which is to come into obedience of the word of God and become like Christ and have his nature and have his kindness and his grace in our speech and be tender and merciful and loving. You feel your flesh going, because ah. <laughs> your flesh wants what it wants, when it wants, how it wants it. Amen or only. <laughs> But we're to speak the truth in love, and that's really a a true witness of you developing and growing up in Christ and developing in your salvation is that you're able to be loving and gracious and show mercy and kindness and turn the other cheek and be able to forgive and walk in forgiveness. See, forgiveness is not a feeling because if you were led by feelings, you wouldn't feel like forgiving anybody. (laughs) But Christ forgave us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us, paying the price for our salvation. When we were unjust and in unrighteousness and our righteousness was as filthy rags, Christ said, I will make a way where there seems to be none. I will redeem them. I will restore them. I will wash them in in my blood. Father, accept this sacrifice. It wasn't something that we deserved. It, was, it is not something that we can even earn. Aren't you glad? It's not based on our earnings, but it's by his grace. And he washes us white as snow. Amen. So another evidence of our love for God is, is, is in our obedience to his word. Another word that our flesh doesn't like, obedience. And we see from the Old Testament that the prophet came to King Saul and he said, obedience is better than sacrifice. To obey to God is higher than any works or sacrifices because we see in 1 Corinthians 13 that even if you give your body to be burned, but it's not done in love, then it will profit you nothing. It'll just come before God as a gonging symbol, making a lot of noise, but having no fruit. So we have to be mindful of these things. So the evidence of our love for God is in our obedience to his word. So in John chapter 14 in verse 15, Jesus said this. He said, if you love me, tell me you love me. Is that what the word says? If you love me, go to church. If you love me, have perfect attendance. If you love me, have the most scripturally based prayer language. If you love me, (laughs) give yourself and go and live in Africa and be a missionary and deny uh, any natural desires that you may have. No. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Say it with me. If you love me. Keep my commandments. And then down in verse 21, I love this. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. How many want uh, the Lord to manifest himself to you? I do. So we see a key here. If you love the Lord, he says, keep my commandments. And we we also see from the Gospels that Jesus said that all the law and all the prophets is summed up into this one thing. Do you remember? Do you know what it is? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And... Love your neighbor as yourself. And then in John, Jesus took it even a step further, speaking with the disciples. He said, love as I have loved you. That's a higher level than was before. 
Amen. So he said, all the law and all the commandments and all the prophets, all of those instructions can be summed up in this one statement. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then love as I have loved you. How many of you see that you need faith to obey his commands? And you're going to need the work of the Holy Spirit to work his grace in you that you can obey his commands. Amen. It says, whoever has my commands and keeps them, it is he who loves me. So Jesus is telling us right here, he's giving us the answers to the quiz. <laughs> he said, if you say you love me, then you'll obey my commandments. So you'll love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And you'll love your neighbor as yourself. And this is something the Lord really convicted me on the beginning of this year, 2019. He said, who's your neighbor? I remember someone asking Jesus this in the Gospels. He said, Lord, who is my neighbor? Well, who is nearby you? Who do you have interaction with? But then in a very basic, natural understanding of this, who is my neighbor? Who is living nearby me? Who am I living nearby? Do I know my neighbors? I know one of my neighbors. And it revealed to me I have some work to do. I don't sit there and look and say, well, you should know more. Well, do you know your neighbors? <laughs> and it do, if we know our neighbors and we can love our neighbors, we can be a blessing to our neighbors. And the Lord just really began to work in my life and began to speak to me as the head of our household and say, uh, why don't you invite your neighbors over for dinner? Why don't you strike up conversation? The scriptures say he who wants friends should show himself to be friendly. So if you don't have friends, it's your own fault. Amen or oh me. And there's no excuse because the Holy Spirit said he would help you to be a friend. And he's the friend that sticks closer than any brother. So if Jesus has been a friend to you and he's been a blessing to you, then you can be a blessing to those around you. And many times the world understands if you will help to meet a need, it will open a door for God to move in that person's life through you. So don't overlook an opportunity to help change a tire or help uh, get the cat out of the tree or, or help to uh, a cup of sugar, a, a, a gallon of milk. And Jesus told us, he said, if you have something in your reservoir, don't withhold when it's asked of by maybe a neighbor. And there's a lot of stories actually in the Gospels about neighbors. He said there's a story about the man who had a need for bread. His friend came over to his house. He didn't know his friend was coming. And he didn't have any bread to offer his friend. So he went to his neighbor. And this is at midnight. <laughs> the man said, go away. <laughs> oh, it's just Bob from next door. Honey, don't you hear him? We just had a marriage seminar, so <laughs> you're in bed, you're laying in bed, ready to go to sleep, and someone's, your neighbor, is at the door knocking. <laughs> yeah, you get it. <laughs> and Jesus told the story, and he needed bread. He came, he knocked on his neighbor's door, he announced who he was, he said he needed bread. He said, come back tomorrow. But because of his importunity... He kept on knocking. And how many know there's a principle there of faith? Jesus said, knock and the door will be open to you. Right. Seek and you'll find. Ask and it shall be given unto you. So, it, you know, you may have a neighbor. I remember he may even be watching. He's a friend of mine on Facebook. Um, in the dorms at Bible College, he was there and I had a little refrigerator, you know, a little, you know, college-sized refrigerator in our room and we were over in, in Samoa in the islands, and it was a big deal to have a refrigerator. We paid rent for the extra utilities it took to have our little refrigerator. I had to believe God for this little refrigerator because <laughs> it wasn't a $100 refrigerator like the store here. It was the equivalent of probably about $300 U.S. for this little refrigerator. But, 
you know, my sister and I were over there and we liked cold milk and cereal, even if it was the long life milk. <laughs> so at least have it cold. <laughs> so we believed God for that refrigerator and we received it and we had it. And you know what? Guess what? There's a refrigerator. Everybody on the floor finds out there's a refrigerator. <laughs> So guess whose door got knocked on? Do you have a little room in your refrigerator for the tuna salad or for the mackerel or for the mayonnaise or for my milk, for my, for my morning tea? And, you know, you think you know the word until the Lord begins to work the word in your heart. And I would just, I would, I would say this, and I know it's a, it's a blanket statement, and you could say, well, it's easy to just say things, and it is, but it truthfully come from a place of sincerity. It's easy to think you know something until you're led to walk it out. Then you realize how much you know or you didn't know or how much it needs to be worked in you in a season, in a time. So every morning at about 6.30 in the morning, on my door is my brother Albert. <laughs> and he needed to retrieve his milk for his coffee. <laughs> so it became this ritual. <laughs> I got to the point where I'm not, I have never been an early riser, but I would wake up about two minutes before he would come <laughs> knock on the door. <laughs> and he would come and he'd get his milk that he was so graciously able to provide uh, storage for <laughs> in our fridge and he's a neighbor he's close by to me but you know what God was working in me his character he's working in me patience loving kindness tender mercies he's working in me long suffering <laughs> what does long suffering mean suffering a long time <laughs> now for a non-morning person that is <laughs> long suffering and you say, well, you know, I'm a morning person. That's not a big deal. What if someone came to your house at 1 a.m. knocking on your door for bread, okay? <laughs> Put yourself in these situations because you'll find yourself in these situations where the word of God becomes real to you. And if it's not becoming real to you, how much of the word are you really putting in your heart? Amen. So he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest, manifest myself to him. Verse 22, very interesting. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. In this chapter, you'll see time and time again repeated the same theme over and over again. If you love the Lord, you'll keep his word. If you love God, you'll obey his commandments. If you love the Lord, you'll keep his word. If you love the Lord, you'll obey his commandments. That means forgiving those that you choose rather not to forgive. That means praying for those that have spoken against you, even been evil towards you and spoken unkind things or done action and you'll have to forgive and even pray to, that the Lord bless them. See, this is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. This is where the truth really either transforms and changes you or you choose to reject that and enter into unbelief. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want to enter into unbelief because there's a whole generation that perished in the desert, the children of Israel, that would not enter in because they hardened their heart towards the report of the Lord. And they entered into unbelief. There's two different kinds of unbelief. There's ignorance unbelief. You just don't know. You don't have an understanding. You don't have light. There's a second kind of unbelief, which is actually a hardening of your heart against the truth of what God says in his word. And you know, we don't want to do that. Now, we may be ignorant in some areas, but God is gracious and merciful. He'll bring people in our life to share the good news of the gospel and bring light and understanding to the simple that we would walk in that and be set free. But then there's also uh, the opportunity to reject truth. And we don't want to do that. We want to accept the truth, even if it's hard on our flesh. 
you know, I found this out. It's hard on my flesh to do the things I don't want to do. But most of the times, it's the most beneficial thing I can do at the moment. It's not the, the easiest thing to pray when your flesh wants to watch a movie. But if the Holy Spirit is leading you into a time of, in a season of prayer, maybe you just need to take some extra time to pray. And maybe the Lord would even lead you to fast a specific meal and take that time that you would have taken to prepare a meal and enjoyed that meal. You take that time to fast and to seek the face of the Lord. And he may lead you to a specific passage of scripture even. And he keeps leading you to that passage because he wants to manifest himself to you in and the truth of that passage, because it's something that you need to know, either right now or right around the corner. It's important that we are sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and that when He leads us, that we are quick to obey. Say it with me, quick to obey. I had an opportunity tonight to be quick to obey, and I chose to take the opportunity to be quick to obey. Amen. But that hasn't always happened. But when the opportunity comes to be quick to obey, whether it's to sow a seed, whether it's to serve, whether it's to help change a tire, whether it's to give a loaf of bread, Jesus said, whatever you do in my name, there is a blessing and a reward for that seed that is sown. Just having, I mean, your time is a seed, a very precious seed. So as you sow your time tonight, believe God for harvest that as you sow your time, you'll reap exactly what you need from the Lord. Amen. Amen. And it may not even seem like you need it tonight, but tomorrow it may be the very word that you depend on and stand upon and, and come whatever attack of the enemy or whatever fire that may be burning, that you have a word, a more sure word that you can stand upon. And if it's to forgive uh, a seemingly unforgivable person that you can forgive and walk in that love of Christ and you have the Lord manifest his goodness, his kindness, his mercy, his provision for you even in that tough situation amen, amen. i love what joyce meyer says there's no drive-through breakthrough <laughs> we just like to go through the drive-through and get get the drive-through breakthrough and not have to go through all the time and the process and the prayer and the fasting and the study and the consecration you know there's a i believe that there is a time and we're in a time where we will see a renewal of walking before the lord in holiness that we will truly let the word of god renew our minds and we'll let those other things be stripped away from us not that they're evil or necessarily even bad. They're just not the most necessary thing in this time and this season in your life. There are things you have to lay aside. It may be a favorite thing. It will most likely be a favorite thing. Unfortunately, to your flesh, but not to your spirit. You're becoming stronger and stronger day by day. Amen. Amen. So if it's beneficial to you, it's going to cost you something. Do you realize that? There is a cost, but uh, there is a great reward. Amen. Amen. So if anyone loves me, verse 23, Jesus said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Glory. Hallelujah. You realize what these scriptures are saying? That Jesus said, I mean, this, these are red letters in my Bible. Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Jesus in the house. <laughs> there is nothing impossible to those who believe. Amen. Amen. Let me consult with the Father and the Son. Hold on just a second here. I got Jesus in my house. He's going to lead me. He's going to guide me. He's going to protect me. He's going to preserve me. He's going to make a way for me. He's going to keep me in the truth. He's going to give me the light where the devil's trying to bring in darkness and confusion and muddiness and, and unsoundness. And he's trying to get me to look at the wind and look at the waves. No, I've got Jesus in the house. I'm going to go consult and I'll, I'll be right back. I need to go to my prayer closet. I think it's so powerful to take a pause. Take a pause moment. 
I'm not doing the peace sign, but the pause symbol on my remote. You know, it's a two. There you go. <laughs> peace, man, take a pause. Sometimes we just need to stop and consider our ways like the scripture tells us. I'm a Christian. Have I prayed about this? I have the, the, the direct line to the ancient of days. I don't have to confer with flesh and blood. I don't have to go and, and search out all, all the different articles and things. I can go to the ancient of days. I can go to the spirit of truth. I can go to the one who knows all things. And I can ask, Lord, is this what I'm supposed to do right now in this time, at this place, in this season of my life? And get an answer. How powerful is that? Because he loves you. And he will manifest himself to you. He'll manifest his goodness in your life. He'll manifest his peace in your life. You should have his precious peace that passes all understanding. I will not be moved out of the peace of God. If the answer has to come today and I don't have the peace in the answer to say yes or to say no, uh, that, you know, to say yes, I don't have the peace to say yes, I should say, and someone's pressuring and trying to, to put pressure on to get an answer, we'll have to know today. We have to know today. We need an answer today. Well, if you need an answer, I don't have peace. It doesn't bear witness in my heart. The answer is no. Jesus said, let your yes be yes. And you know, no, because anything else comes from, consider the source, the evil one. Amen? Keep it simple. Yes? No. Those are my options. <laughs> and if you don't know, I don't know. But when I need to know, the Holy Spirit will lead me and he'll guide me. And I'll be right where I need to be, at the right place, at the right time, with the right people. Believing God. You know, when we come to church, we're a family and we come together corporately. There's a corporate anointing. We all bring our faith. We all bring our expectation. We make a demand on the anointing and the Holy Spirit. He's our teacher. No matter who the vessel is speaking, he can speak in direct. And even he can speak to your innermost man right now. He can speak to you in your spirit as you're sitting there. Beyond even what I'm saying, the Holy Spirit can minister to you answers of what you need. Because you took the time to put yourself at the right place place at the right time and quieted everything else out i can't tell you how many services i've been in when my dad was ministering and i'm trying to listen to my dad preach and the holy spirit's answering all my questions and it's like a sidebar conversation finally i said okay i can't listen to two at the same time lord i choose you <laughs> love you dad but i choose the holy spirit right now and he gave me direction and clarity and and do this do that do this do that and it helped me, and it answered all my questions. I know that God loves you enough to manifest himself to you and give you the answers that you need when you need them in the way that you will understand what he's saying. Amen. You don't have to have a theological, philosophical, hermeneutical degree to hear his voice. His voice is simple to those that want to hear, and he will speak to you in the way that you understand. If you have an engineering degree, he will speak to you in that way to the very greatest detail-oriented process of every step. If you just need a yes or a no, he'll give you a yes or a no. <laughs> Amen. You need confirmation, he'll give you confirmation in the way that he knows will get your attention. Amen. See, sometimes we just, we like to put everything in such a box. Oh, I don't know if it didn't come in that box. I don't know if that's, you know, is that my answer, Lord? Let him lead you, guide you, be free to be you. You know, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and the voice of another, they won't follow. Or is that you lead me to go and drive in my car and park over at such and such a place and be there? I just have the funniest leading, like I'm supposed to be over at across the town over here at this time at this place. You ever had moments like that? I need to call this person. I just feel like I've had the Lord. Maybe you didn't know it was the Lord. Just have this constant prompting to call this person or to check on a situation or to follow up on an insurance claim. <laughs> There's nothing too small to your heavenly father. He cares about you. He loves you. 
He'll manifest himself to you. He is your helper. He is your teacher. He is your standby. He is your intercessor. Amen. He who does, uh, verse, sorry, verse 23, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. It just brings such joy to my heart. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Verse 24, he who does not love me does not keep my words. So there we get the answers to the test. If you love the Lord, then you keep his commandments. You know his word. You've hidden it in his heart, in your heart. And you've endeavored to live according to the word that you know. The light that you've received. Because that's what you'll be judged according to is the light that you've received. Not the light that you don't know. God knows the areas that you're ignorant in. He'll bring ministry gifts into your life to bring light to those areas that you're ignorant in. But how many know that we're all at different levels and different places and God loves us and he wants us to grow? But even if we don't get it all, well, guess what? When we arrive to heaven, I think this is going to be a, a, a class 101. <laughs> beginners 101 we all get there like basic training oh okay well that makes sense that makes a lot of sense well lord i always wondered about that verse that makes sense (laughs) then we'll know see the scriptures say that here we know in part and see in part but then we'll have received the full revelation of god of how great he is how wonderful he is his plan for us amen he said that we will rule and reign with him in eternity So there are jobs in the kingdom of God. So if you were picturing yourself floating around on a cloud eating grapes, probably not. (laughs) Then we will rule and reign. Said if you're not able to rule and reign and and take care of things on here on earth, how will you be able to judge heavenly matters? Does the scripture say that? Yeah. So there's more. Say, help me, Lord. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. So if you love God, you'll hear his word, you'll receive his word, you'll mix faith with that word. Yes, it's for me. Yes, it's truth. Yes, I need to obey this. Lord, help me to obey this. Lord, help me to do this that you've called me to do. And you keep those words. I love that part of the, what we would call the Christmas story. The angel appears to Mary. He gives her the message and says that she said, be it unto me according to your word, O Lord. And then says that she hid those words in her heart. And the whole time that Jesus grew up, after he was born, she had those words hidden in her heart. The words that were spoken to her. You will bear a son, not just any son, the son of the most high. His name shall be Jesus. He will be the savior of his people. So she sees Jesus, toddler Jesus, playing. Joseph's a carpenter, so probably had Lincoln logs, (laughs) something to that effect. And but she'd see and as a mother's heart would look on a child and have those words hidden in her heart even have those words hidden in her heart when she looked at her son on the cross. Hidden those words in her heart. Isn't it interesting, out of all the things that Jesus could have addressed while he's on the cross, he instructs John to take his mother, Jesus' mother, as John's mother. Family was the thing that he dealt with. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that powerful? God cares about you. He cares about your family. Jesus cared about his mom and who would take care and look after his mom. I love my mom. I'm a mama's boy. (laughs) That's blessed me when I see that. But that she hid the words that God spoke to her in her heart. And even in the most trying of times, seeing her son up on the cross, doing what was spoken of, which was proclaimed the truth of what his mission was to save his people from their sins. That was still her son. But the higher calling that is God's son. She hid those words in her heart. So it's powerful. The word that you hide in your heart will be the word that God will withdraw in the seasons that you, as you're living 
in the time and the season that you need those words. The Holy Spirit will remind you of those words that you've hidden in your heart. That's why it's so important that you study the word. Paul told Timothy, be a student of the word. Study to show yourself approved. Not unto men, but unto God. Lord, I've hidden your word in my heart. David said that I might not sin against you. Your word is a standard. Your word is my truth. Your word is the light unto my feet and the lamp unto my path. Proverbs chapter 4. Turn here with me. Proverbs 4 and verse 20. So we have to know the word of God. We say we love God, but we don't know his word. Then we really haven't got a revelation of who he is and of his love. Proverbs 4 verse 20. The King James says, my son, attend to my words, give attention to my words, incline your ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, verse 23. For out of your heart are the issues of life. Have you found that out to be true? That words are powerful. Words are spirit and life. And they, words are containers. They either carry life or they carry death. They either could carry blessing or they carry curse. And so your words are powerful. The words that you receive in your life are powerful. They are seeds that will either produce good or evil. They, are, they will produce blessing or curse. And so it's important that we understand the power of words. We don't just say anything to say something. But dead air is uncomfortable, isn't it? <laughs> I paused. But we're not just supposed to say things just for the abundance of words that we're just saying all these words, talking, 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 but having no purpose, having no foundation, having no, um, no aim, if I could say it that way. You know, if I'm aiming for something, I want to hit the target, right? So if I want life in my life, then I need to speak words of life into my life. Because I am the captain of my ship. <laughs> my life, God has given me dominion and authority over my garden, over my life, over everything that I have dominion over, my finances, my physical body, my mental state of mind, over my family, over my children, that I speak forth words of life unto my children, that I give them knowledge and understanding concerning the scriptures and concerning God, that I be a father as a representative, a mirror of my heavenly father to my children, that if they ask that with no good thing will I withhold from those that I love, amen? You know, it's very important that we not mess up the picture of our heavenly father to our kids. God keeps his word, amen? So if dad said that he'd take Jaron to get McDonald's, even if he's uh, after dinner, if he's still hungry, dad has to keep his word. Because if I break my promise, I'm... I'm setting a standard and an example and a witness to my son that if I, if I don't keep my word, then neither does my heavenly father keep his word. We're to teach our children with knowledge and understanding. Amen. And so as a witness, I gave my son my word, even to my own hurt, the scriptures say, to keep your word, even if it hurts. Well, I was moved in a time of an emotional moving, and uh, and I promised I'd do something for someone because I I had I, I was I was moved with sympathy towards someone, so I said that I'd give them this and I'd show up at this time and I'd be there when they need me. But the emotion has passed. <laughs> but we have to be people of our word, Amen. I know it's almost a relic of a, of, of the past, but. Uh, I was still raised that a man is only as good as his word. And if my dad said something was going to happen, that's what he meant, and that's what was going to happen. If he said, well, <laughs> son, you're misbehaving at dinner, when we get home, there'll be, <laughs> there'll be consequences. <laughs> I, you know, time passed. <laughs> it's like, yay, I'm, I'm scot-free. <laughs> we got home. 
I have an older sister, a younger brother, middle child. That adds to any part of the equation. But um, I seem to always be meddling in other people's business in my family, causing problems, you know, middle child. So we get home, <laughs> we get home and time has passed. The emotions have passed. The rebellion has passed. But the consequences will still go. <laughs> so whether it was a spanking or a limiting of freedoms or, you know, things like that or extra chores, there were consequences. Amen. So I learned obedience through suffering. <laughs> the scriptures say Jesus learned obedience through suffering. And if he is our standard, then there will be things that we are not necessarily enjoying, but we are suffering through, but he's working his character, his nature in us, that we would be a greater witness for him here in this fallen world, that we would still be a light in the darkness, that we'd still be people of integrity, people of character, people that keep our word. If we say we're going to be there at 6, we're going to be there at 6, or before 6, not 6.05. Amen? Amen? I mean, battle plans are battle plans. And if it says 6 o'clock, we launch such and such at this directive, then guess what? 6 o'clock on the nose is when we launch. Not, not 5.59 and not 6.01. Amen? Uh-oh, I'm getting looks. <laughs> now, this is not a strength in me, but it's a character development the Lord is working in me. If you say you're going to be somewhere, be there when you said you're going to be there or be there early. And they had a saying at Bible school that uh, that sp specific Bible school, that time, it was actually five minutes earlier than the actual clock time on your phone. So if they set a specific time, if it was 6 o'clock, you had to be there at 5.55 or you were late. And I hated that. <laughs> but I learned discipline. And it's the disciplines that we develop in life that will keep us and strengthen us. Amen. And will be a blessing to others. Because if you can't rule your own spirit, you'll never take a city. And we have all these great ideas and plans. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But if we can't manage $5, how are we going to manage $50,000? Jesus said, if, you've been, if you will be faithful with little, then he will be proven with much. But if you be unfaithful with little, then you'll never arrive to much more. Amen? That's part of God being just. He's not an unwise employer. He doesn't put people in positions without testing them. You know what testing means? Fire. Suffering. <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears. It's not a joyous celebration testing time. But if you are going to entrust your life... 30,000 feet in the air, you better hope that Rolls-Royce tested that engine. And that the captain and the co-pilot, the pilot and the co-pilot tested those engines and went through all the systems making sure everything is working before you are taking off on the runway. In the same way, God looks as uh, to take care of his children. He said, if even the smallest little one in the kingdom, if you cause one to be offended, he said it would be better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and be thrown into the deep than to offend one of God's little children. We need to walk in love. Amen? To be full of mercy, full of grace, full of compassion towards one another, eager to forgive, eager to show mercy, eager to walk in the grace of God. Amen? And I know we just had the marriage seminar, but this is the first place. It starts at home. It starts not in the public assembly in the scene and out in public, but it starts in the home. It starts in being the first to offer forgiveness, the first to forgive, the first to show mercy, the first to, to make the bed in the morning, the first to pick up the socks and the underwear, <laughs> the first to scrub the toilet. The first to take out the trash. The first to empty the dishwasher. The first to fold the laundry. The first to help where help needs to be done without having to be asked to help. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it is the same in the church. We should not have to be asked to serve. We should just have a heart to serve. And if we see something that needs to be done, just we do it. 
not for the praise of men and not for the attention, but as unto the Lord, the scriptures say. Amen. Amen. So if you pass a piece of trash, you just fail the test. You pass that sock on the floor, man, you just fail the test. That is a fruit of walking in love towards your spouse, is to take care of what you have the responsibility for. Amen? A little different, but hey. <laughs> Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 1 John 3, verse 13 through 24. I'm just going to read this because it's good. and We're not going to get into it. I told you you could just take time and, and meditate on these scriptures and get light and revelation. Verse 13 says, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Don't <laughs> you love that? <laughs> Being a Christian in this time and season, I don't know if you noticed, it's not a popularity contest. <laughs> You stand up for anything, for stand up for truth and stand up for life and stand up for God's word, then it's not going to be a popular path to walk. But this is uh, the Apostle John reminding us, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Verse 14, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. We love one another. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. So we're not supposed to have hate in our heart towards one another. The Lord sees it as the same as murder. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Verse 16, hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. So if you love someone, you will be not just willing, but actually walk it out to lay down your life for them. It's out of your way to help someone, but you help them because the love of God is made real in you. And so you want to have his presence be manifest even more in your life. So you are inconvenienced to love someone else. You see that? That picture of that? They need a ride. They need, they need some help. They need $5. Whatever it is. The opportunity, there are tests coming your way. So rejoice. Amen. <laughs> Such a popular message. <laughs> so Jesus said, no greater love has this for a man for his friend than to lay down his life for them. So serving is just the laying down of your life for your brothers and sisters in Christ. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren Verse 17, but whoso hath this world's goods and sees his brother who has a need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? So if you have something that would bless someone who has a need in that specific need that you have, but you say, nope, Lord, use somebody else. But you have it. The Lord says, don't close yourself off, but open your heart because your heart from your heart flows all the issues of life. You know what, I want, to have, I want to be constantly sowing good seed that I'd be a candidate for harvest. Amen. So if the Lord moves on my heart to, to release finances from my hand to someone on the corner of the street, and I may even have Christian brothers and sisters that say, well, you know, they're just going to go and buy alcohol or buy this or do this or do that with it. That's between them and the Lord. I have to be obedient to sow a seed to the, in obedience to the Lord's leading to, to meet a need. Amen? What they do with that is between them and the Lord. But I have to be obedient to not withhold from the bowels of compassion towards those who are hurting. Because but by the grace of God, that could be me. Amen? And if I'm ever in that situation, I want to have had seed sown that I'd have a harvest come my way. Amen? That's just kind of how I look at that. Jesus, uh, Apostle John says in verse 18, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed, or we could say in action and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask, we receive of him because he, we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, 
and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him, just like Jesus said, he will make his home in you and manifest himself to you. Hallelujah. Dwells in him and he in him, and hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he hath given to us. So there's a lot to unpack here, and we're not even going to get into all of that tonight. But I'd encourage you, take some time and just study on the love of God, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Right before Revelation, right before, you know, it's 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, and then Revelation. It's the very end of the book. (laughs) It's the revelation that John received of the love of God. John himself, in the Gospel of John, he was the one that wrote of himself. He was the disciple that Jesus loved. He got as close to Jesus as he could. Isn't it interesting? He received this revelation of the Father's love. So if you love God, you're going to love people. Just simplify it. Basic. If you love God, you're going to love people the way that God has loved you. Amen. If God has shown mercy and grace... And freed you from condemnation, guilt, and shame. Then you should be a shower of mercy, grace. And free people from condemnation, guilt, and shame. Amen. Don't let someone, let lies from the enemy keep them from fellowship with other believers. Well, they'll never receive me because I did this and I've done that. And I've done this. And, or they've been hurt by church. I can't tell you how many times I've had opportunities to be hurt by church, hurt by church people. But you know what does the scriptures say? Forgive. Because Christ has forgiven you. You know, there are no perfect people here. But we're all growing. And we're working towards a place of maturity. Not perfection, but maturity. Amen? Amen. So this may be for you. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're not perfect. <laughs> no married couples <laughs> look at each other and say, don't be so hard on me. I'm not perfect. <laughs> One flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So... If you're not perfect and I'm not perfect, then there's a whole lot of grace and mercy to be spread around. Amen? We're all growing up into Christ. Amen? So whatever you do, do it in faith. Mix some faith with it. Ask the Lord, Lord, how can I show your love that you'd shower me with every day to those around me? How is it a smile? Is it a kind word? Is it showing empathy? What is it that I can do? Is it maybe an act of service? Maybe is it just a gift of my time spending with someone? Is it, is it helping someone in time of need? Is it just a, an encouraging word? I can't tell you how many times someone's come up to me and said, it's going to be okay. And it was a rough season and a hard time. Where that word I took, not just from them, but I took it from the Lord. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. You're going to make it. Let's just say that. I'm going to make it. It's going to be okay. God is working this out for my good and for his glory. Say this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not looking to me to get these things done. I'm drawing on the strength from the grace of God that has been given to me. There is nothing impossible that is in my path. When I meet it, the strength of the Lord will empower me to have the victory. Hallelujah. Say this, I'm God's favorite. And he showers me in his love, his grace, and his mercy. 
When I'm ready to give up, He's always showing me grace. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? <laughs> Say this, if I fall down, I will get back up. I will repent and I'll be restored. Hallelujah. See, that's hope. You are not a hopeless case. Through the eyes of grace, there are no hopeless cases. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. We receive strength tonight by your word. We see the importance of hiding your word in our heart, that we would walk according to it, that we would have received your love and be able to show your love to those around us in this world that we live. Lord, as we go from this place, we are missionaries. We are your sent ones. We are witnesses of your good news, of your glory, of your saving power in our life, of what once was but is no more, and what you have turned from, from a place of despair into a place of hope, from a place of sadness to a place of joy. And Lord, we thank you that this treasure that we've received, may we be the ones that would share it with those around us in this world. Father, to you be all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We have some new ushers tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Serving. Amen. So let's minister to the Lord with our, our seed tonight. We're going to sow financially into the work that the Lord is doing here in this place and from this place to all of our missionaries and those that are connected in ministry to this house. We, we believe in sowing seed. Amen. Good things are happening. Amen. Lord. Lord says what you cause to happen for others, he'll cause to happen for you. That's right. yeah. Amen. So if you've never blessed someone with $100, bless someone with $100, you can expect a $100 harvest. Or $5 or $8 or 25 cents or, hey, it's a principle of faith, amen? We will never go without. We will always have more than enough. That's my confession. And we sow meals to those that are hungry so that when there's opportunity, when we're hungry, we'll have meals prepared for us. Amen? If you are in a season where you need joy, then you need to sow some joy into someone else's life. Because what you have caused happen for others, God will cause happen for you. Need a fence, sow a fence. Need a car, sow a car. Hey. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, Pastor. Well, the word works when you work the word. Amen? You need some new clothes, sow some clothes. <laughs> Amen? Clear the closets out. <laughs> Now, if it needs to go in the rubbish, put it in the rubbish. <laughs> if it needs to go in the burn pile, put it in the burn pile. <laughs> but you sow like precious kind, we'll, you'll reap like precious kind. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's minister to the Lord, ushers. You can receive the offering tonight. Lord, we mix our faith with the seed that we sow tonight. We say to you, be all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for the harvest of increase in every wave. We never go without. We always have more than enough. There's plenty to, to have and plenty to give, and we'll be able to give to every good work. We call all the bills paid. We call every need met for the family of Grace Christian Fellowship and every member's family in this church. We call their bills paid, their pantries full, their refrigerators overflowing. We thank you, Lord. You said there wouldn't be room to contain the blessings as you open the windows of heaven over our families and over our households as we put you first. So, Father, we take your word as truth. And as we sow seed tonight, we can fully expect that you meet our needs and you even cause our dreams to come to pass because you're that good and we believe it. We thank you, Lord. We rejoice for our health, our healing, our wealth, our strength. Lord, we rejoice and thank you again for our roof that is sound on this building we thank you lord no more trash cans every time it rains <laughs> thank you lord we are so thankful for every good thing even if it's a button that you add to our life lord we give you thanks for it this week in advance in jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. well sunday morning 10 a.m we will be here time of praise and worship. I want to encourage you to come and be here at 10 a.m. for start of service. Praise and worship. 
You know, service doesn't start after praise and worship. <laughs> service starts at 10 and we worship the Lord. And many times in the praise and worship, we're focusing on Him. He ministers to us as we minister to Him as spiritually and in ways that we don't even know we need. A, a touch from the Lord is, is worth the early alarm clock. Amen. <laughs> Oh, God bless you. We love you. If you need prayer for salvation, uh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you need uh, prayer for anything, be sure to come up and receive that. We love you, and Pastors Mark and Shirley send their love, and they'll be here for Sunday morning. All right.